Hi guys, and welcome to my WWE Survivor Series War Games uh, review. So yes, last night we had Survivor Series War Games 2022, the final WWE Premium Live event of 2022. And uh, yeah, I would have done it like right afterwards, but I was just too tired. So yes, this is the morning after Survivor Series War Games last night. And uh, for the most part, it was a really good show. Uh, yeah, uh, we had two really good War Games matches. Uh, and a very good singles match and a very good triple threat match. There was only really one down point of the entire night, and it was a very strong way to finish uh, 2022 for WWE. So, uh, yeah, I have five matches to talk about. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, let's get to it. So, the first match we got was the Women's War Games match, as I thought would, would kick off the show. Yes, we've got Team Bella going up against Team Bailey. You know the team members. Uh, of course, Becky Lynch was revealed as the final team member for Team Be Bel Air. I should have switched to Team Bel Air in my predictions. It's cost me predictions for the year. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, yeah. Um, it was a very good match. Yeah, th 39 minutes. But of course, War Games matches are long because it, it takes, what, like 20 odd minutes for everyone to get in the match for the War Games match to begin. Uh, yeah, it was great. You know, War Games matches are just brutal carnage warfare aren't they because I, i've watched all the war games war games matches in nxt um every single pay-per-view that we've had since since it came back in 2017 and they're just crazy they're absolute carnage there's so many different spots going on but every single woman delivered there were a few sloppy bits a few sloppy moments like a, there was the odd botch here and there with me a year more with another member of damage control but yeah the, i thought there were some really cool spots like there was a try to do like this um like Io Shirai did this really cool uh, moonsault or somersault, whatever you want to call it, off the top of the cell. That was cool. And Nikki Cross, back to her crazy character, of course. She did like just a, jump, a big jump. She was she was hilarious in the match, Nikki Cross. She tried to handcuff Alexa Bliss at one point, but it backfired. Um, I loved B uh, Bailey, Bailey and Becky's face off. I think that's like the first time those two have really, really had a proper feud together. There's not a lot of feud, just a match, Bailey and Becky. You, know, you don't see those two considering they're two of the horsewomen, you don't really see Bailey and Becky have too many fights, but yeah, they, they got, they had their own little segments, and um, yeah, the finish of the match, um, what happened again? Yeah, um, Bianca hit a KOD on um, Bailey. she went into the corner, and then uh, the, the other two members of Damage Control were on, were on um, the table, and Becky hit this really cool leg drop from the top of the cell, boom, one, two, three. So yeah, uh, team Bianca wins. Um, yeah, fair enough. It's uh, I did pick tick team team Bailey because I thought Bailey's due a win, but I guess not. <laughs> she's she's had three losses in a row for her now. Although she didn't she didn't get pinned here, but yeah, really good match. You know, it, I mean, it wasn't the best women's war games match I've seen. I think the ones on NXT were were a bit better, but this, this was still solid. I just think it, it was a bit sloppy in some areas, and even though it did have some good spots, I think this was maybe maybe better than the men's in my opinion. No, 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 it wasn't. And um. And yeah, it was good. My, my only negative with the War Games matches, I'll say this with the men's later on, there's a lot of waiting around. Like It's like a Money in the Bank or Royal Rumble where the, the wrestlers are kind of just li lying in the corner waiting for their next spot. Like They get hit with one move. You think it was like three finishes or something. And they, they, they just lie in the corner for like three, four minutes going, when's the next spot? When's the next spot? Ah, okay. Get. And, then they, and then they suddenly get up. It's like, <laughs> but I get they got a, it's a hard match to work when there's ten ten wrestlers in the ring. It's hard to book book that. But yeah, it still was very very solid. Good way good way to start the show. Then we got then we got AJ Styles going up against Finn Balor, continuing the OC and Judgment Day feud. And uh, yeah, very solid eighteen minute match. Um, you know, I knew AJ and Finn. AJ and Finn was always going to deliver. You know, these two know each other so well from the, the Bullet Club in Japan. They had a, they had a very good match at TLC five years ago, and yeah, they've been they've been AJ and Finn have been feuding for, for a while now with the OC and Judgment Day back at Crown Jewel. So yeah, I mean, this would be a good be a good match, and it was it was very solid. You know, it, it, Finn did dominate a lot of it, but AJ kept pulling off the odd comeback. Um, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson were fighting uh, Dominic and. Damien Priest at the ring, but they, but they all went into the arena, out into the arena and fought off. So it was just AJ and Finn for a bit. Um, and yeah, and towards the end, uh, AJ, out of nowhere, hits a phenomenal forearm. Boom! On Finn. One, two, three. Cl clean. Clean pin. I, I was like, oh, okay, clean pin. Uh, yeah, good match. Very solid match. And I'm, not, I'm just so happy for AJ because, one, it's his first pay-per-view win in a year and a half since Money in the Bank last year. And it's his first singles match pay-per-view win in three years. So, yeah, AJ was long overdue this win. This doesn't really hurt Finn because he's been on a, on a bit of a tear with the Judgment Day. He's had a few wins now, hasn't he? Um, 
beating Edge at Extreme Rules. Uh, they beat the OC at, at Crown Jewel. So I think AJ was due a win here. And yeah, maybe this feud isn't over. Maybe maybe there'll be a, another rematch at the Royal Rumble in in nine weeks. We'll see. But uh, yeah, very good match. I'm happy AJ gets a win because he, you know, he he's been booked not not been booked the best the last the last year and a half. Um, lots of he's he's had some good matches, but he just no wins. So yeah, so it's a good win for AJ. And yeah, so, solid match. Then we got probably the weakest match of the night. Uh, without, well, yeah, without a doubt, we got Ronda Rousey with Shayna Baszler going up against Shotzi for the SmackDown Women's Championship. So yeah, Ronda defending her belt. Yeah, not great. It was only seven seven minutes. Um, the, the crowd just didn't care. You know, and I said this coming into this, the crowd just didn't care. One, the crowd didn't really care enough about Shotzi. She's not been built up enough as a, as a credible challenger um, to, to Ronda. Even though they tried so hard and the, <laughs> they tried so hard in the match package before the match, the, the video package, making making shots look like this badass. She's going to give Ronda the fight of her life. And no, <laughs> she, I mean, she gets a few moves. It wasn't like completely one sided. She gets a few moves here and there. Like there was a really cool jumping dive she hit on Ronda and um, and Shane it into some fans, but they were obviously like plant fans, weren't they? Because they, were, they wouldn't do it to actual fans, would they? But that was that was funny. But then back on the ring, it was just kind of one sided. Shotzi hit a few moves, like I said, but Ronda just kind of dominated for most of it. And then at the end, she hit a really cool Piper's piss off the top rope. Then an arm bar. Uh, yeah, Shotzi taps out. Yeah, the crowd, the crowd was very lukewarm, as was I watching it. You know, Ron, Ronda's, it's weird with Ronda, because she's not a bad wrestler. We we know from her run back in 20, 2018, 2019, she had some good matches with, like, Nikki Bella, um, Sasha Banks, Charlotte. So she's not a bad wrestler. She, she, when, she, when she's with an, another really good wrestler who can make her look good, she has a really good match. But I don't know. It's like it's like some of the times she just her match with Natalia was rubbish. Her match with Liv was rubbish, and this wasn't particularly great either. It's like she's not she's not in a good run at the minute. Ronda she needs someone with her to have a really good match with, and hopefully that's Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. I think that's where this is heading. She's probably going to have a big rematch with Becky Lynch at WrestleMania thirty nine. You know, big big rematch from their their triple threat match with Charlotte at thirty five. So yeah, we'll we'll see. But yeah, Ronda Ronda retains as we all knew she would, and poor Shotzi. But but we'll see. Definitely weakest match of the night though. Yeah. Then on to uh, the triple threat match. Yes, we got uh, Seth freaking Rollins defending his US belt up against Austin Theory and Bobby Lashley. A uh, really good triple threat match. You know, we haven't had a good triple threat match in quite a while, I feel, but uh, this was great. Uh, Seth, Seth Rollins, Theory and Bobby all brought it. They all brought like a different version of themselves, like love different different things to this triple threat match. Of course, the new version of Theory ever since the, his failed cash in. He's much more serious now. <laughs> He's much more... Um, He's the, the selfie, the selfie, silly theory has gone. He's just really, he's like a horrible heel now. Um, and he got some good moves in there. Seth, as always, is fantastic. Bobby was just the powerhouse in this match, just bulldozing Seth and Theory every chance he got. And it, it was a really solid match. There were some very close falls um, towards towards the end of the match. But then, then towards the end of the match, Seth goes for a double curb stomp. I think it, uh, he hits it on Bobby. Um, but then I think Bobby gets straight back up, and then he hits he hits a spear on Seth. But then when Bobby's trying to recover, Theory out of nowhere just covers Seth really sneakily. One, two, three. Oh my God. Theory wins back the US bell. Okay. okay. I was not expecting that. I really thought Seth would retain since this was his first pay-per-view defense. But no, Theory wins the belt back. And I, I kind of did have a feeling Theory was actually going to win when I watched the video package because they're really hyping him up now. I was like, the, fu the future, the, he's the future. And Triple H has done a really good job of repackaging him since the, since the failed cash-in, uh, his character and everything. And yeah, he feels like he's got fresh momentum with this win. And it was a really sneaky way to win. Bobby was like, he couldn't believe it. He got screwed over again. Well, not, not screwed over, he just got... But yeah, he couldn't believe it because he, he he hit the spear, but Theory very sneakily hit the got the pin, got the cover on Seth. So yeah, uh, it's a clean pin on Seth. That's quite rare. I mean, I know, I know Riddle beat Seth at Extreme Rules, but not you know a clean pin on Seth. Seth's lost Seth's lost quite a few times this year to Cody to and other people. So yeah, never mind. I forget I said that. But it's a very good match. Um, I just I'm just surprised that Seth's US title reign was so short. I thought he'd at least have one pay per view defense, but fair enough. They're giving it back to Theory. You know, he, he is he's, he's only young. He's like he's like what twenty four. He's younger than me, but he's, he's the future of the company. Set Theory, and I think they're going to give him a big big push now. Hopefully, he has a he has a good reign with that US belt. Maybe maybe if he holds it, he could have a, a, ma a match with John Cena at uh, at WrestleMania thirty nine. That would be oh that'd be good. Or maybe maybe they're saving John Cena for Logan Paul. That's that's been teased too. But we'll see. That's that's months away. Yeah, but uh, yeah, good match. 
unexpected win at the end for theory winning, but I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not bothered. I mean, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'm not. Um, I'm not upset. That Seth didn't. Win, Seth didn't retain because yeah, theory's theory's a good wrestler. You know, and I've not. I didn't like his selfie selfie gimmick character, but now he's much more serious. I think he's the future's looking back for theory. And Bobby and Seth don't take anything from this loss because they're already very well established stars. Have been for years. So yeah, good match. Then on to the main event. Yes, the men's war games match. Yes, we had team. We had we had the bloodline. We all know who's in the bloodline versus team Sheamus, <coughs> which was Sheamus, the brawling brutes, uh, Drew and KO. And uh, yeah, very very good match. Um, just like the women's war games match, it was a thirty eight minute car carnage. Um, who started the match? I think it was Pete Dunne and Jey Uso who started the match. But obviously, you know, every five minutes someone comes in, uh, and yeah, it's just a fun build up to that to get into the war games match. Uh, Roman was like no to, J to Jimmy he's like send Sammy in because before they were like seizing where does Sammy's loyalty lie like they had that hug and J T Roman Reigns was like this looking annoyed so he was like oh are they going to turn is are they going to turn on, on Sammy Zayn tonight is the bloodline going to turn on Sammy we'll that's the big question going into the match what's going to happen with Sammy and Jey Uso in KO that was the big the big question heading into this Wargames match <laughs> And um, it was great, really good war games match. When when it, when it fully got started, and we got the blood, we got the bloodline of brawling brutes. The all just features of opposite rings. It was carnage. There was a really cool spot where <laughs> the brawling brutes hit like the you know the, what Sheamus does the oh uh, on, on someone's chest. But they all hit it on the bloodline for like I think it was like twenty different hits. That was really funny. Um, so does Sequoia and Drew had a good face off because of course Drew wants a bit of revenge. And so does Sequoia after costing him the belt at Clash at the Castle. Roman Reigns and KO had a bit of a fight because obviously they had. Uh, Kay's been targeting Roman hasn't he and he wants some he wants some payback from their matches uh, nearly two years ago now blimey um, it was great no, every one of those matches was great Pete Dunne was great um, Ridge Holland was great the Bloodline was always was great but the the the, um, the goat of this match the MVP of this match was definitely Sami Zayn Woo! this was like his his crowning moment as a member of the Bloodline tonight wasn't it all last night um, <laughs> it was great what they did with him like he saved Jey Uso's skin a few times he accidentally took um, a super kick accidentally because um, Pete Dunn got out, out of the way um, then towards the end of the match it was him and KO like what's going to happen what's going to happen but then he low blows KO like oh Sammy no a lot of us thought he was going to turn on the bloodline and side with KO again no then he Roman's like good boy finish it and yet um, Sammy Zayn hits a halluva kick on KO they recreate the spot you know where Ro KO's face was like that on, on Sammy's chest uh, that same spot they did uh, Battleground uh, about what seven years ago, blimey! Uh, but the, the same spot, good storytelling there. And then, then Jey Uso hits a super kick. They worked together. A oh, super kick, a frog splash on KO. A one, two, three. The Bloodline defeat the Brawling Brutes in the War Games match. Um, War Games. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's it was great storytelling at the end with with Sammy. And then at the after the match, Sammy and Jey Uso have a big hug. They finally they finally set squash their beef, and the crowd really pop like. Like, Sami Zayn and the Bloodline are so over. Like even though they're the heel team, they were getting cheered most of the match. There was there was Sami Uso chance. There was UC UC. Like I felt bad for Sheamus and the and the, and the, the heel the face team because they the Bloodline were the faces of the match. They were getting cheered the most. But yeah, I thought this would start to show like sowing the seeds of the maybe the the, few, the beginning of the end of the Bloodline heading into next year. But but no, if anything, they're stronger than ever now because Sammy's now fully got Roman's trust. He's got Jey Uso's trust. They had a big hug. And yeah, after the match, they all just like, yeah, embraced each other. And the Bloodline is stronger than ever heading into next year. I really thought this would be the big, the, big, the beginning of the end and that one of the Bloodline would get pinned and it would piss Roman off, like either Jey or, Jey or Sammy. But no, it didn't happen. Uh, that's why I put. That's why I picked Team Sheamus because I thought that this would be a bit show show that the bloodline aren't invincible and the, the cracks are starting to form heading into next year. But no, it's not. They're stronger than ever, and we'll see what happens now heading into the Royal Rumble next year. Um, maybe Roman's going to have a match with Sheamus or something. I mean, we've, we've got we've got a month and a half now, well over a month and a half, two two months really, two over two months now to build to uh, the Royal Rumble in the end of January. So um, yeah, guys, because we're not getting day one. Yeah, guys, uh, really good show. I mean, the men's the both both war games matches were really good, but they were definitely not as good as the the NXT war games matches. Like for me, the undisputed era's matches in war games were some of the best matches I've ever seen. But maybe NXT they're allowed to be to be more there's allowed to be more carnage, more weapon spots, and more crazy spots in NXT. Whereas in the main roster, they've got to be a bit more careful. I think to to be safe for, safe for the superstars, so there's no serious injuries. Uh, so yeah, they were both good war game matches, men's and women's. But for me, nothing will ever probably top the the, the undisputed era's 
four World Games matches. They were they were amazing, especially the first one in twenty seventeen. But the these were still very good, They're absolutely very good. Um, very good storytelling, like I said, with Sammy. Uh, the crowd was so <laughs> the pop with Sammy and Jay so hugged, and uh, yeah. But like I said, my only issue with World Games matches is there's just too much too much waiting around. Like poor Drew McIntyre, he. During this whole thing with Jey Uso and Sammy and KO, Drew McIntyre was just lying there in the corner for like like ten minutes, and even after the match. And same with same with the brawling brutes and Sheamus. And they were just lying there for ages. And I was like, what, is one of them going to get up and save KO? No, no. Okay, <laughs> it just feels a bit silly. But I guess that's, that's what they've got to do. They've got to stay down for ages and let them do their spot. But yeah, on the whole, really good show. Apart apart from Ronda and Shotzi, eh. But so everything else was very good to, to amazing. Um, and yeah, what a great way to end 2022 for WWE. Woo! So yeah, guys, this, this will be my final re review video of 2022 since we're not getting a pay-per-view in December, just like last year, new TLC. Uh, it's a shame. Oh, I miss TLC. I loved TLC in 2020, but yeah, we haven't had it last, last year or this year. So yeah, whatever. And we're not getting day one either. So we're not doing a day one prediction video in, in late December. <laughs> so yeah, our, our next prediction video, with, video will probably be mid to late January for Royal Rumble with Callum. But yeah, don't worry guys, I definitely will do try and do at least one or two or three videos uh, in December to wrap, wrap up the year for my channel. Uh, so yeah guys, hope you all enjoyed uh, WWE Survivor Series War Games! Uh, hope you all have a great day, uh, have a lovely week, and uh, yeah, I'll see you all in December before Christmas. Well, I'll, I'll do definitely do one or two videos, but yeah guys, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for watching my prediction and review videos this year. It's been another great year, and I can't wait to get started again next year for the Royal Rumble. Woo! So thank you all for watching, guys, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye. And acknowledge the bloodline. <laughs>